My name is Dennis Gabriel Schindler. It's nice to meet you all. And thanks for coming to my class. This class will be about leg lock defense, but it's more about false positives and understanding false positives in regards to leg locking. Because leg locking is a vast, vast topic and you can go really, really deep into the rabbit hole. And there's so much you can do that it gets just super complex and especially for beginners, they tend to not want to engage in that and you get lots of lots of leg locks and finishes and taps where you shouldn't get them, which then will be a false positive and you think you're good at leg locks until you roll with someone who's actually good with leg locks. And you notice that it becomes a lot harder and that your whole leg lock game goes out of the window just because you're not used to not getting taps off of false positives. Does that make sense for you? So I'm going to talk a lot because it's just important that you understand certain things, but we're still going to practice some stuff because we only have an hour. I try to put as much information in as possible. It will be an information overload. Okay, so don't even try to remember everything. Every one of you will um, get different things out of it, right? For the advanced students, grab me, ask me ex extra questions, okay, because we can't do everything, right? So just grab me and ask away. After the class, I think it's open mat if I recall correctly. So just let me know, I help wherever I can. If it's leg lock related, great. If not, it's not a problem at all. So just grab me, roll with me, ask me questions, and come by, right? So, false positives. Does everyone know what's a false positive, right? There's not many things where you want to have false positive tests, okay? Corona would be maybe one of them, right? But you don't want a false positive. So, can you do We have lots of different positions in leg locking. So I said, it's pretty, pretty complex. Let's start with straight ashi. So when my partner has straight ashi, and I just sit here, let my heel get exposed, watch while he breaks my leg, then that's, that's a false positive. It should be really, really, really hard for him to get heel exposure, to get a good grip, and then to finish the leg lock. It shouldn't be easy, right? Because people don't know what to do. This happens a lot. On a high level, you almost never see a leg lock from this position. Almost never. There's some rare, rare exceptions. Because the position itself is not strong enough. It can be untangled really, really easy. It's not easy to expose the heel and get a good bite on the heel and finish it. Does that make sense for you? So the first thing you need to do is hide the heel, right? If you're hiding the heel, it should be really, really hard to get a good grip. So if I'm just here hiding the heel, and he, without inverting, tries to get a grip on the heel, like it's, it's really, really hard. It shouldn't be easy. He doesn't even get there. He doesn't even get a grip on my heel. And even if he does, before it's fully locked in, I can still slip, right? So even if he gets the heel, before he gets a really, really good bite, I can point my toes and just slip. And even if he's is pretty well into the position, if I know how to do it, this is not over. You get lots of lots of taps here just because people don't know what to do. And if Road tries to put pressure, you will notice that it, it takes a while. Right? It's like, yeah, there's pressure in the ankle, there's a little pressure in the knee but you need to play around with this to get to know your body and where your limits are. Of course, be careful not to hurt yourself, but it's, it's not like, oh, yes, my heel, I need to tap. That's not how it works, right? So he has a good bite on the heel, and even, even from here, like, I can slip. He just lost the heel. So the first false positive you get when you leg lock is people give you the heel voluntarily. That's not how it works. Even if you get the heel, it's not that easy to finish, <coughs> right? You can still slip, okay? That's really, really important. Now, for him to be able to expose the heel properly, he could reap, 
right? So if he starts reaping, like this is really strong for exposure, right? He gets to heal really, really easy. Even if he goes to inside Ashi and puts his legs inside, like here, it's, it's the same thing. Like he has to heal. I couldn't hide the heal because he was reaping. He's internally rotating my hip, which points money inwards, which exposes the heal, points the heal out. This is one of the best ways to expose it. But if he tries to break me from here, like, see, it's, it's not that not that easy. There, there were still a couple of seconds, one and a half seconds left for me to do stuff. This is one of the positions that you shouldn't necessarily be tapping. Because he has no control over my secondary leg. And even if he puts pressure, I can move. It's like, I, I just treat my knee. Of course, I need to untangle this, and we have different options from here. But this shouldn't be like an easy heel and finish for him. He needs to work and switch positions a lot to be able to, to get a good breaking mechanic out of this position. Right? So that's a position you should not be tapping if you know how to do it. Of course, I'm telling you, okay, there's lots of false positives, and you shouldn't be tapping there before your neck breaks. Tap, right? It's, it's like, Everybody is a little bit different, and if you're not comfortable with the position yet, it's not like, oh, that is sad, that's a false positive, I shouldn't tap, and your knee just gives in. Like, that's not, the, that's not the plan here, right? You just need to know that this is not a position you should be easily tapping. Does that make sense? Now, it's the same thing with cross ashi configurations. So, the second one would be, we're in, in a cross inside ashi configuration. Here it's the same thing. He has the position, but he doesn't have my heel. When I hide my heel, like try to expose the heel, it's, it's really, really hard. It's not easy, right? Even if he gets the heel, because it's an inside heel lock, it's a little bit harder to slip. But even here, you can put him on the shoulder, you can slip, you can do stuff, right? Don't forget that. The third thing is, even if he's here, I've hired my heel, the premise is, oh, I'm staying here and he can't dig for the heel invert and do stuff. No, I won't be staying here. You see that a lot with beginners. They hide the heel, which is great, right? But they're staying here watching and, and not doing anything. You should try to pummel from here, extract your knee and do different kind of stuff. Okay, so pummel out of the position, don't stay there. Right, so again, the first false positive is you just voluntarily give the heel. The second one is even if he's got the heel, it's not over. The third one is if you got your heel hidden, don't stay there, come out of the position, right? And the last and that comes into play with a little bit of advanced guys, they won't be staying there, they will be inverting, going belly down and stuff like that. That's the time where you expose the back. Okay, in high level competition, you see that quite a lot. You see someone tries to attack the leg and the guy who is getting his leg attacked slips out, attacks the back. Even high, high level competitors do that. A couple of good examples would be Gordon against Philippe Pena, Craig against Kanye Duarte, stuff like that. You have so many good examples of that. So don't stay there, right? But to give an example, I've hidden my heel or slip before. No, root goes inverted, and I just slip my heel out. Right, stay there. So what, what do we got here? Back exposure, right? So I, I can do different kinds of stuff here, but I could just come up and attack the back in different kinds of ways, or just leave the position if that's what I want to do, right? So if he tries to dig on the low side, belly down, you have back exposure. Right? But this is a little bit more advanced. So if you're not feeling comfortable with that, it's no big deal. Okay? So now, for you to be able to know how those things work, you need to understand that cross ashi has different positions. Right? We have cross inside ashi, which some people call saddle, inside uh, sankaku, honey hole, whatever. It's all the same thing. Okay? So, do you see the secondary leg? I should be giving that to him. That's the next false positive. So if he just grabs it and sets me into the position, it's like, okay, now I'm stuck. But understand that 
even here, you get exposure is not easy. Even if he puts, puts the leg on the other side and, and goes here and tries to expose the heel, like it's, it's not there, right? It shouldn't be voluntarily just be there. In order to expose my heel, he needs to let go of this leg somehow. And you should be hand fighting this. You should do something, not just sit here and watch, right? So if he tries to expose the heel, like, no, this leg is gone. And I'm not here. I can hide the heel, I can pummel, I can do something. Okay? I understand that that's not the same thing with 50 50. That's how Philippe Pena got his leg broken. Okay? Because when his legs are not to the inside, but to the outside, yes, you can hide the heel, but he can expose it belly down, go into backside 50 50 variations and stuff like that. So you need to, you need to be aware of this that depending on his leg position, some things change. It's a little bit easier with straight ashi because it's more or less the same, doesn't matter where you are. But with outside, uh, uh, with cross ashi, it's important that you know legs to the outside, 50-50. Legs to the inside, different start. Okay? So, but it's the same thing from here. So I'm hiding my heel, I come under, I hand fight. Like, it's, it's not, it's just not give him what he wants. Because the, the problem he has in 50-50 is, like everything, is I have three limbs. He has two to get the heel and finish, right? So I have my arms, so I have my leg, I can't work, right? So you keep that in mind. That's not the same thing from 50-50. But we're not going to go into 50-50 too deep today, okay? We're going to focus a little more on regular straight ashi and cross ashi configurations. Up till now, any questions? Does that make sense for you? If some questions manifest after, come get me. I'll explain everything again. Right. Now, scoot a little bit so everyone has a little bit of space. So what we're going to do is just the alignment of heel slipping. So what I want to do is this, you know, these positions for like hip mobility. That's really, really easy for most people, right? What I want to do is point my toes. This is what I want to have against the inside heel. This is what I want to have against the outside heel. Some of you will get cramps in the foot or the calf because you're not used to this pinky toe position. But that's essentially it. Inside heel, outside heel. And this is on the other side. It's the same thing. Okay? It's just, it doesn't matter where people are. It's pointing the toes. They get into that alignment. Okay? Every one of you can do that, right? Okay. Come back in a little more. So now, we're an outside action. Yeah. So we are here. What I want to do is hide the heel, right? So I'm just point my knee out, point my heel in, put the blade of my foot on the ground, and pressure in a little. I have a post here. I have my leg here. And see, that's what I want to do, right? So it's really, really easy. I'm here, and I'm just gonna hide this. And it's the same thing. He tries to get the heel, like work a little bit. You see what he's doing? He tries to lift my knee, which would point my heel up. That's why I need to have pressure in. I need to push into him. And because I don't want him to invert, unless I want to attack the back, I'm just shelving over his hip so he can't come up that way. Do you need the pose with your hand or do you do it all with your weight and your secondary leg in order to... Sometimes I can, yeah. but it's not always the case. So you, you will decide that on your own if you're into the position. If you decide, oh, I need more pressure, then use the post. If you decide that you don't need it, you can just push up with the leg. All right? So now from here, we're just going to do, it's going to switch the leg over. Right? So he went, yeah. He switches to cross ashi. Puts his legs to the inside. Okay, now it's the same thing. Now we're here. Now it's the inside of my foot on the ground. Pointed heels. I curl inwards. Right? And if he tries to expose the heel now, it's really, really hard. And if you need pressure, push into him. Use this. Shouldn't be easy. Okay, now it's just you're gonna switch back. You're just gonna switch back into. Outside Ashi, and it's the same thing. Now I'm here. You just switch between those positions and play all around a little bit. The better you are, 
the more resistance your partner can give you. Okay, if you're not familiar with all of this, just go slow. I should be winning, okay? So if he can't force it, then he's doing too much. Okay, he should be working for me. One thing, don't invert. We're not there yet, okay? So don't go inverting for the heel. Does that make sense? Does anybody need to see it again? All right, with clapping. We have a dis discussion here at Build Taurus with clapping. If you want to clap, do so. If not, just don't. Okay? <laughs> One, two. Maybe I should have asked you guys if you're familiar with those positions because some of you have problems with that, right? So I'm just going to show really quick how to get there and how to switch between the leg positions. Because the only thing we're going to add is the heel slip itself, okay? The mechanics are more or less the same. So when we start here, my partner has both his legs on the inside, right? He just straightens one leg, scoots his hip. This is Irumi Ashigarami. This is the first position you get, right? You can move, you can do that from here, or you can do it from outside Ashi, when he brings both his feet to the outside. Okay, it's both valid. You can, you can do both. Now, for the second position, for the inside heel, what you're just gonna do is just fall back, bring the hip up, bring the leg over to the other side. And now, just switch the legs to the inside. Okay, if he wants to switch back, he can either do the leg first or the feet first. Some of you prefer the feet, some of you prefer the leg, but you need to do both. So he can bring his feet out and then bring the leg over. And we're back in outside Ashi. Does it make sense? Any questions regarding the positions we are in? If we have problems getting there, call me, I'll help. Okay? So now, when we're here, and I made a mistake, and he gets my heel. Do it slow and with not a lot of pressure at first. Now, when you're more experienced, you can put more pressure, okay? So even when he puts pressure and he's tight, I can start slipping from here. Even if it's, if, if it's pretty, pretty tight, okay? So what you want to do is you want to point the heels bring the knee outside again, and push him on his shoulder. His breaking mechanics are weaker if he's on his shoulder. There are some exceptions to that, but generally speaking, you want to be on the elbow. Okay, so for, for the guys that don't know how to get the heel, he's just gonna cross grip the heel, go for the heel for a second, and just lift it up into the armpit, and bring the heel over the wrist. You don't want to be at the crook of the elbow, you want to be over the wrist, and that's how you get it. You can do it with one hand at first, right? So what I'm going to do now is just thumb grip inside the crook of the knee, pose, and I'm going to push into him to bring him on his shoulder, and I'm going to point my toes while doing so. And then I'm going to bring my knee to the outside and see that slips the heel. And now we are back into hiding mode. Does that make sense? When he switches to the inside, it's the same thing. So he switches, switches the feet, and let's rotate for a second. And now here, he just grabs the heel, gets my heel, and we're here. It's the same thing. I post, I push him on the shoulder, this is crucial. If he can maintain on the elbow, it's kind of hard to slip the heel. I point the toes, and I push into him, and slip. Start with, really, really loose grips. And the better that works, the tighter your partner can be. Okay, but start really, really slow. You can start with one hand, so get a false grip. So when we're here, you can start with one hand. And I'm just gonna practice here against one hand. If that works, you can be a, bit, a little bit tighter. If that works, you unite the hands, or loose a little, and do it tighter if your partner can do it. It's the same thing as before, I should be winning, okay? Any questions regarding this? Can you still push his leg over if he has his uh, reaping uh, leg further in? Yeah. Um, so if he puts the reaping leg further in, this actually loosens up the position. And then up towards your leg. Okay. Do you want to show me? 
No, no, no. Alright. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna grab you when we're started, then you're gonna show me what you mean, alright? Alright. Maybe he needs help, that's okay. Maybe. Okay, so again, he's here, he's exposed to heal, I couldn't hide him. I thumb post, I go in, bring him onto the shoulder, and hide the heel. Now he brings it over to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side against regular or outside Ashi. He gets the heel. I want to point the toes, bring the knee outside of the foot and hip, and slope my heel. Okay, it seems hurt at the beginning, but once you get the hang of it, it's actually quite easy. And normally, you want to do it when it's not fully locked on, because when people expose the heel, it's not tight, tight, tight right from the get-go. They need to tighten up first. And at that time frame, you have good opportunities to, to slip the heel. Does that make sense? All right, one, two. Any questions? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the most position of the knee when you stood out. Mm -hmm. uh, you already you care of uh, that you're not pointing the mat with your knee or uh, is it for you not important? To point the knee towards the mat? Yeah, that the knee, your own knee, mm -hmm. when you pass the knee line, you don't care that you have contact with the mat or you're still always a little bit higher than the opponent's knee, knee line? It depends a little bit, if I understand correctly, it depends a little bit on the leg configuration. Yeah? Yeah. It's mostly when you're in the cross you go down here. Show me. No, no, take it on me. You have this, and then I turn. Yeah. You it's try to get the weight on your knee on his leg, or you... No, no. Depending on what I'm doing, you're doing stuff differently, but... Yeah. Because this, this is my position, okay, and as long as your, your knee is on the floor, you squeak. Yeah, this so you, you don't want to have pressure on the knee. Yeah. You want to have pressure on the foot yeah. and elevate the knee. So you, you don't want that? No. No, no. Okay, that's not my question. Okay, very good. That's why I asked you. You're more yeah. prepared. Put yeah. it on or you yeah. just slip it out? Yeah, I want to slip it out. So you as a defender don't want that touching the knee? Yeah. Does it answer the question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any more questions? If you're not used to heel hooks and the positions, this is a lot, okay? But get familiar with the positions. This is really important. Grab me. I'm going to show you the different positions just that you recognize where you are. This is always the first step in attacking and defending. Recognizing, am I at straight or cross ashi? Are my feet to the outside or the inside? Is the heel exposed or not? Is there another attack? like a straight foot lock or a toe hold or a knee bar. Because you need to defend those differently. It's not the same thing. But understanding how to hide the heel will give you a lot of more options when you're in the positions. Because you're not screwed right away. You have options, okay? So now, if you have problems with the positions and the slipping and the hiding of the heel, just do that again. But just for the people that can do that, he can opt to invert. And we need to know what to do, because if I stay there, he catches the heel. I have two options. Try to expose the back, which is a little more advanced, but that's what we're going to do today. And controlling the spiral that you do. And just making sure that the angle doesn't change. What I mean by that is, we're going to cross inside and we're here, and I'm hiding the heel here. And he comes up, you, keep, you see he can expose the heel again. So I couldn't control the angle, he switched the angle, and that's why he got heel exposure. Right, so when people invert, you need to go with them, or you need to switch directions, which gives you opportunities to attack the back. So, as I said before, this is not that easy. So if you have problems with that, just do the same thing you just did. Because nothing changes. So when we're here and Luke goes to his knees to expose it, 
what I want to do is I don't want to curl anymore because then he can expose it. I want to stretch. Now it's a little bit higher from that position. From here, I'm just going to hip switch. So I point and I switch over. And my knee points towards the other direction. It's really important that you don't pause in the middle unless you want to get knee barred. Okay? Because when we're here, and he comes up, and I straighten the leg, and I, yeah, this happens. Or I turn, and he just stays here, but I just turn till here, and it's still a knee bar, which would be really, really bad. So I need to point my knee to the other side and try to get my knee out here. And now we're in back attack exposure. Okay? That's how more or less Philippe Pena took Gordon Ryan's back. Okay, it's really, really good. It's a timing thing though. So you need to time it correctly. If you don't time it correctly, you lose. It's all about timing. It's the same thing with outside action. So when we're here and he can't get the heel because I'm hiding it, and he opts to go belly down, and I stay here, he can expose and fall back if he wants to. And now he's got heel exposure and he has a good break. Okay? So when that happens from here, it's the same thing. He comes up, I start to straighten the leg a little bit, go to the inside of the knee and try to get the shoulder. Sometimes I just push the foot and now I just want to get my knee out here. And we end up in the same position. It's the same thing. They're closely related, just from the other side. Okay? To just put that into perspective once. When we're here, Rune goes belly down and he goes farther and falls here. Now we have cross inside action. And the other way around, it's the same thing. So if he goes wow, and spins around, now we are not side action. So those are really related. And what I do is I catch him in the middle. That's why it's so similar. So when he comes up, and I'm here, and I can put my knee up, we're here in the knee wedge. When we're here on the other side, and he comes up, it's the same thing. Straight and wow. And we're here in the new edge. It's the same position, essentially. Okay? And if you can do that, people tend to be much more cautious about attacking your legs because they're always afraid of getting the back tank. I know that's not easy, but try it out. Even if you can't do it under resistance, you've seen it and you know what happens if you do certain things. So even if you can't do it, it's good to know. And if you follow professional grappling, you see that all the time. Because leg rocking is such a big meter in no gi. Everyone is attacking legs because it's, frankly, it's just very, very good. It's very effective. But people get sloppy and that's when you can get attacked in the back. Does it make sense? You've got ballerina clothes. Yeah. That. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. I want to try it. Do I need to show? Yeah. Good. When you stretch out your toes and your leg, uh -huh. are you pointing also your whole body and your face in the opposite direction? Are you to get the more uh, more leverage, more brain, or you just uh, uh, close your hips and your upper body is still in the in the L position? I'm always in alignment. So when I hide my heel, I turn with it. Okay. My head can watch and do stuff, yeah. but I don't want to be here. Does that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, I just thought that you did the same, right? Like, yeah. Okay. It's the last thing, then we're going to get together. And as I said before, I know it's a lot, but just that you know what false positives are when leg locking, how to hide the heel, if they catch your heel, how to slip it, and if they try to invert, how to take the back. Okay. I know it's a lot, but try it out. One, two. So, um, this doesn't work against straight ankle locks, or? No. No, okay. Against straight ankle locks, the defense is different. Yeah. That's important to know because in the past, people tended to show the same defenses against straight ankle locks and heel locks. That doesn't work. What typically works against heel hooks, if you try to do that with straight ankle locks, you're in trouble. Okay, and vice versa. It's the same thing. Like, there's many similarities. 
but you need to look at your feet when you're being attacked and recognize if it's a straight ankle or a heel hook or anything else. It changes your approach. So what we did today is mainly heel hooks, which is the king of the leg lock. So it makes sense to work on that, right? Which doesn't mean that the straight ankle locks, knee bars, toe and so on and so forth are not valid. Okay, it gets tougher against good opposition, especially the straight ankle, but still people can make it work. But the things we did today are specifically against heel hooks. Because even when you're straight ankle lock, your feet, your foot position changes a lot as well. Because you have different mechanics. Does it make sense? Yeah, thanks. Any other questions? No question. Oh, sorry. When you have this yeah. to um, hide the heel, and you just want to get out of dodge, how do you, it's harder to get out because your knee, your back healing, as soon as the leg is It's actually easier. Can you show that yeah. mechanism? To yeah, me? sure. So when we're here, what I want to do if I want to get out is, by the way, that's also stuff we're going to do on Thursday. So if you're in Thursday class, we're going to defend those positions and go into back attacks from there. Right? So when we're here and I've hidden my heel, now I want to pummel. And this is really, really easy to pull out. Doesn't mean that if I straighten the leg, I can't pull it out, but I give him a longer lever that he can use to really hold the foot. So when we're here and I straighten the leg and he just latches onto my foot, it's like, I'm not gonna get that up. But if I go here, now it's up. That makes a huge difference. And it seems counterintuitive, but you actually can free your knee easier when it's not straight in that position. Okay, there's, there's other instances where it's better to straighten the leg. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Of course. So we're here. We're going to review everything real quick, right? So the first thing was bringing me outside of the game. We're here. And if he's trying to get my heel, it's really, really hard. Now, if he gets the heel, and we're here, I do the same mechanic, just slipping the heel, right? So we're here. Now, if he decides to come up to his knees to expose the heel, which he can't do now because he's, he's changed the angle. Now, before he has the heel, I'm stretching a little bit. I'm pulling my knee in. I can straight or cross grip, and it's just pulling me out in this direction. Now, this is a little timing based as the other one as well. So you need to, to really work with it to get the timing down. But once you get it, it's really effective. And people tend to not go belly down on straight ashi again. On the high level, you typically don't see that because that, that always happens most of the time. Always most of the time. <laughs> with the other side, it's the same thing. So when we're here, it doesn't change, right? I want to hide the heel. If he's not able to get it, great. If he gets it, it's the same mechanic, hiding the heel. It's just the pressure is different. Right now, if he goes belly down and he do nothing, he can expose the heel again because the angle is wrong. So before he gets the heel, I start to straighten and I need to hip switch really quick and pull that knee towards my chest. So don't fall. Here. That's a fast movement. You can't do it slow. Okay, with the outside ashi, you just stay on the same side. With the inside, actually you need to switch the hip and bring it out. But essentially the same thing. Answer? Yes. Very good. Now, as I said before, it's a, for some of you it's information overload, but because we've got it filmed, just watch the video. And if you encounter questions after the camp, shoot me a message. Okay, I'm always happy to help. Just let me know how it works for you. And this should give you like an entry into heel hook defense, which is really, really good. Any other questions? I think there's no, no class after this, right? Is there a class after this? It's closed. The schedule says closed. Okay. But in the other room, it's still open map, right? I don't know. It's open map. Yeah. It's like four. Passing half. Passing half. Yeah, it's a class of it. Uh, this is closed, right? So something's happening here. Okay. So definitely grab me later if you have any questions. And 
Thanks for coming. I hope you had a good time. I had one.